TitleMatchNetwork.com. Well, Mike Graham is, is still probably, you know, one of my best friends. You know, I can count my best friends, you know, on one hand. Mike, uh, when I was in Florida in those, in those early years, you know, Mike, uh, Mike uh, had, uh, well, he had, uh, you know, hot rod cars and boats and stuff like that. So he was always off doing that stuff. So I really didn't have any kind of relationship uh, with Mike. But always what I remember about him then when I had started, you know, was that how hard he worked because, I mean, he really he, he grew up in wrestling with Eddie Graham and, and he had to haul the ring around and he had to put up chairs and stuff. So, I mean, he didn't he didn't he didn't just hop in the ring one day, you know, he he, he did. It's it's kind of, you know, dojo style, but it, just a different a different way of uh, of, of learning to wrestle. But Mike is, like I said, he's one of my best friends, and you know we we both got Harley Davidsons, and we we ride whenever we can. He sells all the stuff too now, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the in the early '90s, you know, when uh, Harley Davidson, you know, kind of kind of had its peak, Mike and I would go when we were traveling on the road. We'd buy two or three motorcycles, and in whatever town we were in, the first thing we do is go get the Auto Trader right. and a newspaper, and we we'd buy Harley Davidsons because. People, you know, people down south really wanted them. We buy them in Chicago and Detroit and stuff. Where during the cold weather, you know, the first thing that goes, you know, when things get tight, you know, mm-hmm. guys, old lady says, you know, bikes got to go. We got to pay the bills <laughs> for for the winter. So, I mean, we had a lot of fun with that. We, I've still got, uh, you know, like three or four of the motorcycles that we that we got. I mean, at one point, uh, he and I had like over forty motorcycles sitting in a in a in a warehouse that i have and it's just it was incredible i've got pictures of it and, and uh I, I guess you'd say we were business partners but what right. we did is we just man we got to play we got to play with motorcycles you know which is a, a hobby of mine is building motorcycles I, I build i've got two that that i built completely myself that uh you know that i enjoy and mike enjoys them too so the relationship i have with mike is just i mean we're such good friends it, it, uh, I probably talk to him on a weekly basis. Right. Uh, I live way down in South Georgia, and he's uh, he's up at the uh, power plant. Uh, I think three days a week, two or three days a week. So you know he's he's steady with that, and it, and uh, you know he works hard. What he's, about his father? Eddie Graham is uh, you know he owned uh, the Florida the Florida uh, promotion with uh, I believe it was Duke Kiyomoka. Uh, I'm trying to think of what his son's name was because because he worked for Vince McMahon for for just a little a short time. Uh, you know, Duke is a Japanese. You know, it's his son. If uh, man, if I could only remember his name, because you know we just had a lot of fun together. But uh, uh, Eddie, Eddie would always we would get to fly in his plane. We'd fly to the towns and. Uh, you know, really, it was just he just wanted to get out and exercise his airplane. So four or five of us, you know, it cost us 25 bucks a piece, you know, so it, it would almost cost that to drive. Right. So, you know, Eddie would fly us and and, and Eddie, you would you could sit down with him or, or he'd sit you down. And uh, he's one of those guys where you better bring, you know, you better bring a lunch with you if you're going to go talk to him because you're going to be there for a while. But he was, you know, I, I think that Eddie had a sixth grade education, but but everything that he accomplished and did in his life, you know, he just he learned it, you know, it was it was right off the cuff, and he was he was really an intelligent person, you know, and he but uh, uh, you know I, I'm sure folks know you know about how he passed, and it's just you know to me that's a that. That was a sickness, you know, that, that had to come from something else. And I don't understand, right. you know, what happened about that. And Mike and I just, don't, you know, don't talk about it. But it's, uh, I respected Eddie Graham because, you know, he was always good to me. He, he treated me the way that, that, that a true teacher would, would treat a student. So, so I, had a, I had a great relationship with Eddie Graham. Pillman, uh, Pillman, uh, uh, Pillman and Mike Graham and I, you know, went out a lot. We went out to clubs and everything. You know, Pillman could, 
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know the fun fun part of it was, you know, is that I guess, you know, I I have or had a reputation, you know, with the guys in the dressing room, you know, to where you know I could go and, you know, play all night and then, you know, still be up from the night before and then go and and do my thing in the ring, you know, which I I don't do that anymore, but 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 you know it. Uh, Pillman was one of those guys too, you know, he could, geez, we'd go out to the bars and yeah, my, my wife knows anyway. I mean, we'd go to, <laughs> we'd go to the, you know, like the cheetah or, or, you know, strip right. clubs and, and we'd, we'd stay out on all night and party and, you know, we'd live on, live on 30 minutes of sleep, you know, a day. And, you know, there were times when, you know, we, we weren't into drugs or anything. We were just able to do it, you know, because of youth. And Pillman was one of those guys, you know, he could hang in there. So, you know, I got, I've got good memories of Pillman. He just, <laughs> he was a wild man. <laughs> you know, there have been times when, when, when I have, you know, I have taken pills, I've taken Vicodins and Lorsets and stuff like that. But I took those, you know, when I was injured. And, and there are some guys that, you know, there are reasons to take those medications, but then also, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, there's a, I'm trying to think of the correct, uh, there's a reputation, you know, for those drugs of being abused and misused. Really, I mean, right now with, with the condition of my joints and stuff, you know, I could, I could go to my, my orthopedist and probably get 90 Vicodin. You know, which are, you know, they give you, they give you a buzz, you know, you have a beer and a Vicodin and you're, you're having fun. Yeah. So, you know, there, there are, there are some guys, you know, that, that do that. And they, and there are guys, you know, it's, Hey, it, you know, it's within the confines of, of wrestling fans and people that know about wrestling, you know, that they know, you know, they wonder, you know, where did this guy go? And then you see the internet, you know, that, right. he, that he passed out on somas, you know, which is a muscle relaxer. Well, you know, I think like the recommended dose is like one to two tablets a day. And, and I've myself have seen a guy, you know, put 10 of them in his hand and, right. you know, you know, just eat them, you know, just to get the, the high or the low. But, you know, I, I, I never really got off on that. I, you know, I, I took, I did take, you know, the Vicodins and stuff, you know, for my knees, because I mean, uh, you know, they, they, they were shooting injuries, you know, you know, they, they weren't worked angles or anything. I mean, right. I completely, uh, I completely blew my knee out. 